do a little bit in short. How'd you hear the back? We're live. Yes, I think we are live. I'm just going to um, make sure the text are working, everyone can hear me, but I'm not going to get started until half past. Um, welcome, everybody. Do pop your questions into the chat. My husband, Rocky Monster, is here as well, and he's going to help me process your questions and make sure I don't miss anything. It's my first time going live on YouTube. So I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but hopefully you'll all be nice and get some questions in for me. Hey there. Oh, I love seeing all your names popping up. Hi. Wow, we've got Dennis from South Africa with us. That's really cool. Hi, Sandu. Hey, Geef. <laughs> okay, we're just going to give a couple of minutes and let people join. Welcome, everyone. Um, oh, I'm liking Christopher's question. <laughs> That one makes me smile. So it is now half past. I want to thank everybody for joining. I'm Vanessa Ruck, also known as The Girl on a Bike. And today is a pretty special but kind of incredibly emotional day for me because today marks the seven year anniversary of me being hit by a car on my bicycle back in 2014. So for anyone who's not fully familiar with my story, I'll just do a little bit of a, a recap of what my accident was and how it was quite so impacting on my life. While I am giving you this little bit of a summary, please do get your questions into the chat on the right. I have my husband with me, also known as Rocky Monster, if you're on Instagram, and he's going to help me try and process some of your questions and hopefully I'll be able to get through all of them. But I look forward to hearing what you are. So if we go really briefly back prior to the accident, to give you a little bit of an idea of what life was like for me back then, I would have described myself as incredibly sporty, absolutely addicted to the adrenaline, the endorphins of pushing myself in extreme sports. And kite surfing was the main one. But on the 25th of March 2014, life as I knew it changed pretty dramatically in a single moment. It was a normal Tuesday. I was cycling home from work. I was actually on the way to the lake to meet some friends to go wakeboarding. And I was busy cycling along, went through the traffic lights as they were green. And unfortunately, a car coming the other way decided not to stop at their red light and cut straight across in front of me, leaving me with nowhere to go. And I went straight into the side of the car. And in that moment, life as I knew it changed. Now, I wasn't scraped up off the road by paramedics. I wasn't a bleeding mess. I did go to hospital in an ambulance, but I was discharged from hospital that evening with bruising. Now, if we fast forward seven years, I have now had seven surgeries, including a reconstructed right shoulder and right hip. So we think about the fact that I was diagnosed with bruising. It gives you a little bit of an understanding of quite how much of a roller coaster it has been over the last seven years trying to get myself ultimately back to a position where I'm pain free. But unfortunately, I've had to re readjust my expectations and go for managing the pain but having a body that I can push physically and do the sports again. I'm currently about 11 months post my most recent surgery and unfortunately in the future there are going to be more as a result but I'm not going to let any of that be an excuse. I have discovered motorbikes through my recovery and you can now find me on every type of motorbike that I can possibly get my hands on. I love enduro, trials, adventure, street, Harleys, new electric bikes. So I'm pretty much in love with motorbikes. And that is really how the Girl on a Bikes journey began and is on sort of that kind of road. So I'm going to start to get through to some of your questions now. Um, so I can see a really good question from Witten popping up. If you go back and speak to your 2014 self, what one piece of advice would you give her from your perspective now? That's a really good question. 
I think it would be believing in yourself like I believe in my na- myself now. Over the years, the challenges both physically and mentally have forced me to take learn new perspectives on life and have new sense of gratitude uh, of what's important in life, what really makes me happy. And I think I have realized that I'm a lot stronger than I ever was. And I think I would tell myself that I can and to keep my head up and push on because the strength that I have now, I think would have really helped me in those earlier days after the accident. So, um, question from Gary, do we have any plans for once lockdown is over? So anybody who's sort of joining this, not from the UK, in the UK, we have been quite restricted on our movements due to COVID-19 and have actually been in lockdown pretty much in the house and since just before Christmas. And from Monday, we are going to be allowed to ride bikes again. We're not going to be able to go wild, but I am planning to go out with Rocky Monster and do some hard enduring green laning on, on the bikes on Monday. As far as big trips, at the moment, we are taking things by ear and seeing how things go. I think we're going to be trying to make the most of the incredible roads and scenery and landscape that we have here in Great Britain. So exploring Wales, maybe making up to Scotland, because I'm not sure when international travel is going to be possible. So no big plans at the moment, but I can guarantee the second I'm allowed to make some bigger plans, they will be. Um, Because Iceland was one of those adventures. I I need some more of those and I'd like to be able to go on some of those soon. Um, So I've got a question from Emma. Other than biking, what how else do I keep fit? So that's a really good question. And um, Emma actually knows me pretty well. Hey, Emma. Pre-accident, I was in the gym and I was cycling and I was doing all kinds of fitness when I wasn't doing my sports. But with my now slightly reconstructed body, I have a little bit more of a difficult relationship with the pain of doing things versus the pleasure of doing them, which um, isn't an excuse to not be fit because it hurts. It's more that I try and do the things that give me the most pleasure because then it's worth the pain. So for me, getting out on the off-road bike is my ultimate way of keeping fit because I really, really enjoy it. Uh, I do still try and do some YouTube videos and some hit classes. I'm really trying to get back into cycling again. I find it quite difficult with my hip because I can't quite load it in the same way. Um, but I'm not going to give up. You know, I'm managing about eight mile cycles at the moment, which is something I'm quite proud of. I think the key thing to my fitness is actually eating really well. I um, work hard to make sure that I'm fueling my body with the best nutrients to give it the best chances to heal, process the the damage that my body is still recovering through and give me the energy to make the most of every day, I suppose. I'm loving seeing all the questions coming in. I'm feeling my eyes can't quite keep up whilst talking with my brain. So I'm hoping my husband might be able to help me with some questions. We're Romaniacs this year. So we've got a question about Romaniacs. Is there a particular question about Romaniacs? Still planning to go if restrictions are allowed. Okay, so the question is whether we're still planning to go to Romaniacs this year. So Romaniacs is the Red Bull Romaniacs, a big hard enduro race in Romania, which I'm terrified about. I've been training really hard, uh, apart from being in lockdown. And it's certainly going to be the biggest push that I have ever done on my body prior to the accident or post-accident and also challenge as far as the skill set. Are we still going to be going in July? At the moment, we haven't decided not to go, but it's going to be down to how logistically feasible it's going to be to get there with COVID. We've got to drive through multiple countries, so we will play it by ear. I hope to still make the start line and the finish line, so we will see. Stay tuned. Okay, Kif has asked, do you think your new mental strength and state of mind would have developed if you hadn't had your accident? Possibly not. Unfortunately, life 
is one of those journeys where sometimes we need the hiccups, the bumps in the road and the challenges to really make us really look at things from a different angle and question our, you know, our approaches, our perspectives and find more strength. And I think that even if we take an example like COVID and going out, we don't quite realise how much we enjoyed popping to a supermarket until we're no longer able to go. And I think with so many things in life, sometimes it takes that little bit of a side punch to to make you see things differently. So I'd like to think I would have reached the point of the level of gratitude and happiness that I have now, but I think I probably wouldn't quite have made it here without the accident, which is kind of a strange feeling because I actually had a realization that in some maybe quite sadistic way I'm almost grateful for the accident because it was the journey that I obviously needed to go on and while I've had a lot of pain and hardship it's taught me a lot um did you teach yourself the mechanic side of things using YouTube, et cetera? So that is a really good question. Thank you, Meryl. So I have done a lot of YouTubing, uh, watching things, reading forums. The actual manual for the motorbike is really helpful as well. But I do have a little bit of advantage of Rocky Monster, my other half, who is very capable of all these things. So it's a, a massive combination. And I think the the best thing for me in learning to mechanics is finding the confidence to give it a go. I have actually just done a YouTube video uh, with some of my tips on finding the confidence to start out doing mechanics. But I would also caveat that, yes, I do mechanics on my own bike, but there is so much on mechanics that I don't yet know. I'm still very much learning and enjoying it, but it's very satisfying when you're out on the trail and there's something wrong with your bike. And because you've been doing the stuff in the garage, you can actually start to diagnose and get yourself out of trouble, which is a really nice feeling, not having to push home. Oh, any plans to expand my merchandise from Gavin? What a topical question, Gavin. So, um, yes, I have recently launched some Girl on a Bike merchandise, which I'm very excited about. So if you'd like to support me on my website, you can get some merchandise. There's some men's and women's hats, beanies, mugs, etc. But I have had some pretty early feedback that some of the guys don't really want girl written on them. So stay tuned. There is going to be some more male orientated uh, kit coming. So yes, there is a plan for that, Kevin. Um, I look forward to talking to you about that more. <laughs> um, okay, Andrew, what was going through your mind at the hospital bed after the accident? And what pushed you through the rough time to be where you were today? So my mind in the hospital bed, unfortunately, there's been a few hospital beds through the journey with the multiple surgeries. And I suppose it was taking every moment, every challenge as it came. I wasn't thinking in that hospital bed, how am I suddenly going to try and race for maniacs or anything like that? I was thinking about how do I survive the next five minutes, the next 30 minutes, going through the night. Little things like having my teddy with me when I was in hospital on my own so that I wasn't on my own um, because all your visitors always have to leave you. Um, things like that gave me a lot of strength. And no, no girl is ever too old to have a teddy, just to caveat that. I. I think it was just taking things in bite side chunks. And I think goal setting has been something that's really, really helped me. It The biggest goal I set myself was getting my first dirt bike. And we actually went and bought me one when I was a couple of days post one of my hip surgeries. And it was five months till I could even sit on it. But it was sat there as a goal to remind me, you know, every time I just hurt and I didn't feel like doing my physio or I just wanted to give up. The bike was there as a reminder. And some of my goals have been, you know, small wins to keep me going, like making it to the bathroom on my own so I don't have to pee in a bedpan or getting my own socks on, making it downstairs to have dinner. And so the goals are sort of short term, long term to give you little wins to keep your spirits up. And I think my mind was just on surviving those moments and getting through and knowing that it would get easier time heals 
and I was going to come out the other side. I just had to try and keep a smile on my face and get through. And if that meant, you know, managing with painkillers, that's what that's what I did to get through as such. Um, okay, Rocky Monster, please can have another question. Have you ever ridden in the USA? Ooh, have I ever ridden in the USA? I actually have. So the first time I rode a Harley Davidson was in Texas with Alex and we hired Harley Davidson in Wichita Falls and we rode up to the Palo Duro Canyon. We did Midpoint Cafe on Route 66 and had like a proper little Harley road trip, did about a thousand miles. It was absolutely incredible. That's my only riding experience in the States at the moment. I am definitely ironing up Play, eyeing up places like Arizona or Utah for some hard enduro riding and actually I think the list of the places I'd love to ride in America is longer than my little brain can think of right now or on live but I really hope to get back over to the States once where we've got better, better travel possibilities with COVID. Um, have you thought about a big adventure like the Premier Highway? I think the challenge for me with big, long travels, and I often get asked whether I'd like to ride around the world or do something like that, is that my attention span maybe isn't that incredible. So I really enjoy being able to get on that type of bike and then this type of bike and then ride in sand or then ride in a in mud and mixing it up and by being able to you know play on different bikes I really enjoy the challenge and the versatility it gives me in my riding and also on a really practical adulting level suddenly having three months or six months out of work um, with my husband to be able to go on those trips isn't really all that feasible I wouldn't say it's a no but it's not something that I can easily just be like cool let's disappear for four months tomorrow because um adulting takes over a little bit there I think um okay how Stuart Bell oh hey Stuart how is the trials bike riding helping your enduro okay so for anyone who's not too familiar with trials or enduro trials is a much smaller lighter bike which tends to be ridden for more technical slow skill kind of riding whereas enduro tends to be a little bit bigger and more explosive so for me the trials bike has been game changing for my enduro riding but also actually for all of my riding even my road riding is improved because I've got better balance and I think for confidence the trials bike is fantastic because it's that much smaller and it just doesn't feel quite as risky you can push the skills in a more controlled less risky way on my body and learn the technique to then put it up to the bigger bike. So I think the trials riding has been like almost like a fast track for my enduro riding and something that I really recommend for anyone who thinks they're really, really good at riding, get on a trials bike <laughs> and it will make you see that there's another arm to riding that's a lot of fun as well. Okay, so what's the next question? I've got one for you. Okay. What were your feelings after the accident? getting on the bike oh that's a good question what were my feelings getting on the bike after the accident terrified i i can't over over estimate over emphasize how terrifying it was getting back on that bike in the aftermath of the accident i was actually diagnosed with a couple of mental health disorders the first one was change disorder um, which if anyone would like to know, I can talk about that as well. But the other one was a fear of the road. And I would actively avoid any contact with the road for effectively a fear of a second accident. And there are a few things that helped me in my mental process to overcoming that. The first one was trying to rationalise it and realise that it was an accident. And by the name accident, it wasn't a malicious attack. Just because I'd been hit once, it doesn't mean I was going to be hit again. So I had to bear that in mind. I was also lucky enough to be able to ride ponies when I was a child. And I do think like the sole purpose of ponies is to get their rider on the ground. But anyway, I'd frequently fall off these little ponies that were naughty little buggers. 
And my mum would pick me up, wipe away my tears, whilst quietly checking that I wasn't actually hurt and tell me to get back on the pony. And you always, you always got back on when you fell off. And so I kind of had that mentality. And then the kind of next biggest thing on this was that I didn't want to let the lady that hit me that day take away so much. It was almost like this stubborn determination that I wasn't going to let that one moment stop me being able to get back out on the road, whether that's cycling or or getting on a motorbike. Um, but what I can't emphasize enough is how terrifying it was getting on that bike. And if you've ever cried in a motorcycle helmet, you'll realize quite how awkward it is because one, you can't really wipe your eyes and then you get water in your helmet and then you all steam up and it's all just a little bit not great. And I joke about it now, um, but it was really, really challenging. I think uh, one of the things that really helped me there was actually having intercoms and being able to speak to my husband and not being on my own completely. I had him there and we could be each other's eyes. Um, and then mindfulness is the final part of that and being aware of my mental thoughts and trying to not beat myself up when I got scared, processing the fear, deep breathing, reassuring myself that I was okay. You know, there's not a car coming at me at the moment and just taking it really slow, but it was really scary and it was really difficult getting back on the bike. Um, but it was something that I I knew I wanted to do because I didn't want to continue through life with a fear like that, you know, throttling me as such. Um, so someone's asked, have I spoken to the driver that hit me since the accident? No, I have never spoken to the driver. I have vague memories of seeing them at the scene of the accident, but I, I, I've never spoken to them. They were prosecuted. And, um, you know, I had a, a court case against them to cover all my medical expenses, etc. But I've never spoken to them. It would be it would be relatively interesting to know if they ever found out what the result on my body was from from their driving. But that's something I'll, I'll never know. Um, so Luke wants to know, where's my favorite place to ride and who are your riding buddies? Oh, Luke. So Luke is one of my favorite riding buddies. <laughs> Wendu Quarry is probably one of my favorites because it is one of those, it's an old disused quarry and it has endless amount of terrain where I can probably only sensibly tackle about 15 or 20 percent of it because that's my skill level so far so it's like the world of growth and then you meet people like Luke and Tom and Alid my husband I'm gonna get in trouble for not mentioning people <laughs> <laughs> there's all the all the one do guys <laughs> um and we ride together and it's really great riding with people that are better than riding than me because one they can say no Vanessa don't do that you'll die stop but try this one. You're ready for that one. Uh, and helps me learn. It's definitely helped my progression. Um, okay, Rocky wants the next question, please. Any advice for getting into trials and enduro? Okay. Yeah, advice for getting into trials and enduro. So I think my first advice is to actually make sure that you really enjoy it. Um, and that sounds really simple. But getting a bike, getting all the kit is a bit of an investment. So I would try and find somewhere where you can go and do an experience day, hire the bike, hire the kit, have a bit of a play. And there are lots of places like that that you can try different types of bikes as well. So for trials, you've got places like Inch Perfect Trials. Um, for Enduro, you've got A.D. Smith, KTM Sweet Lamb. There's quite a few places in the UK and there will be lots of places all over the world where you can just have a play for the day and figure out if you like a four stroke or a two stroke or whether the 250 is more comfortable than the 350. And then once you've decided it is something you want to invest your money in, it's about getting some of the gear, getting the bike and finding clubs near you, training areas, like training areas where you are, uh, maybe little hare and hound practice days and just having the confidence to go along and have a go. I think the most important thing to remember with getting into off-road riding is that off-road riding is very different to the road, 
but we all started as beginners apart from maybe Jarvis who I think Graham Jarvis and Tony Bow came out of their mummies being able to ride off-road motorbikes because they're like magicians but for the rest of it we were all novices and beginnings once so it's totally cool to be frailing around all over, over the place and falling off I still do that so um, just give it a go and enjoy it and make sure you wear all the protection. Alea wants to know which is your favourite bike to ride to the shops? Oh what are shops? <laughs> Been in lockdown too long. Um, favorite bike to ride to the shops? Probably to pop to the shops. It would be Thug, my Harley Davidson. I fully accept that my Harley is not a refined, beautiful, smooth machine. It is just a beautiful potato, potato. That's the sound of a Harley, by the way. And I just have some kind of connection. The Harley Davidson was the best decision in my whole mental recovery from the accident and made me realize that there could be a bit of fun and adventure at a point where my body wasn't able to do any of the sports and I could just about ride the Harley. So when I get on Thug still now, there's that little bit of, don't know what noise that is, but I um, get a warm, fuzzy feeling inside on Thug while she also kind of deafens me because she's so loud. Any aspirations to ride in New Zealand or Australia? Ooh, upside down riding in New Zealand or Australia. That would be amazing. I would love to. It's just about whether I can figure that out and get out there, basically. I certainly wouldn't be against the idea. It sounds like a lot of fun. And I've seen some really cool riding trains and stuff out there. So I like the idea of it. Tony wants to know what's the best road trip you've done? Iceland. I think Iceland wins hand down. Or uh, if you want to see some of the footage from Iceland, you can see them on my YouTube videos. So we did a week on Husqvarna 71s and it was all off road. The first river crossing was about 50 meters from leaving the tarmac, and that kind of set the scene for the rest of the day. Iceland is a land of absolute, complete and utter extremes in the landscape. It felt like we were on Mars and then Jupiter and then on another planet altogether. I would say it's really cold and really wet, but if you're in the right gear, it's absolutely breathtaking and some pretty sporty riding as well. So Iceland would be my, um, my top road trip. Okay, I'm waiting for Mr. Rocky Monster <laughs> to feed me a question. <laughs> Which terrain did you have most trouble manoeuvring and would you do that again? Oh, what's the hardest terrain I've ridden in? Um, it's probably between really snotty, leafy, wet, muddy hillside in a wood where you've got roots and just no traction at all. I'm very good at just suddenly ending up on my side in those kind of conditions. Um, I find it really challenging and picking up the bike in those conditions are quite hard. And then deep sand is also quite challenging, but really, really satisfying. So the um, Western beach race, Ross Gegnes beach race is something that I'd really like to put my hands to and try sometime soon once they are able to run with, with COVID. But um I know that I will be cursing myself for every moment of those races while I try and survive, but afterwards, hopefully, I'll feel really satisfied. Speedway or ice race? Speedway or ice racing? Oh, ice racing. That just looks ridiculously gnarly and fun with the spike tyres. Yeah, I'd go with that. Okay, Mr. Ruck, is there a question? Describe your perfect day of riding. My perfect day of riding. Oh, that sounds lovely. Um, my perfect day of riding would be covered in sweat, covered in mud. Mud always seems to gravitate from my face. It would be a day somewhere like Wernsey Quarry or somewhere with some really technical riding. I would be on my Husqvarna TE 250i two-stroke and I would be terrifying myself with some ridiculous terrain 
I'd be having some falls, but hopefully a few more successes and I'd be pushing myself on. Now, this question often comes up with regards to how do I cope with the increased risk of doing hard enduro with my body? And that's a pretty valid question because I'm very aware that my body is absolutely more vulnerable than it used to be. And if I had a fall, I could potentially get considerably more injured now than maybe I used to have been. So there's an element of calculated risk, which is wearing all of the right protection. So I pretty much wear liat, head to toe, knee braces, full armor, hip protection, so that when I have a fall, it's not an if, it's a when I have a fall, I am as protected as I can be. And then the other element is that I only have one body for my whole life. And just because my body has had injuries that I I manage and I live with, it doesn't mean I want to give up and not keep pushing my body. I want to try and make the most of what I what I can do with my body. And if I got injured, then I get injured. At least I'll have had fun pushing it and learning and being out there. I'd rather that than I don't know, get injured in the bathroom, which happens. So I'm uh, I'm not not too worried about hurting my body again. I definitely have moments where I'm out on the bike and the the vulnerability of my body really kicks in. And I'll have moments where I'm just on my bike and I just freak out. And I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I here? I might, I might be in a rock bed or somewhere little bit feeling out of my depth on the bike and I do have to shout at myself at my helmet and give myself a little pep talk and tell myself to grow up and believe in myself that I can do it um and it's I think it's human to have moments like that so I try not to beat myself up over it but I definitely try and beat myself forward so that I I do keep going and pushing myself and he says who do you look for for inspiration who do I look for for inspiration? You know what? I'd like to say some of the top most amazing riders like Tony Bow on a trials bike, but I actually find looking at them almost like unachievable because their riding is just so beyond the capability that I feel is within my reach that I'm in awe of it, but I don't necessarily look to them to go, I want to try that because that would definitely lead to how did Vanessa die. I think I actually get more inspiration from some of the guys that I ride with in in normal circumstances. So um, people like, I'm going to get in trouble now, aren't I? (laughs) My husband. husband. (laughs) People like Alad or um, James or people like out in northern Spain, Andorra that I've ridden with. Um, people like Luke, who I met at Jarvis School. People that are a little, f- to my head, feel a little bit more uh, less out. I'm now digging a hole that Alan thinks I think he's not like amazing. I think I, <laughs> I'm really digging a hole. So I think I try to look to people who are a little bit more achievable that are considerably better than me, but. I can feel like I could actually put in the practice and get closer to their level. Did I dig out the hole? Yeah. <laughs> Have you thought about coaching, Emma? Have I thought about coaching? What uh, in off-road mo- in motorcycle riding? My honest answer is I I don't think I'm good enough. I um I love that maybe someone thinks I might be good enough to to teach people based on that question but maybe in a few more years once I've got a little bit more experience and a bit more dialed in technique that could be something I could look at I haven't actually been off-road riding that long so I think I'd want a little bit more time on the bike before I could go into that but maybe going on tours with people would be something um sooner where I don't actually have to pretend to be the person that knows how to ride (laughs) Steph asks, what tunage features on your riding playlist? Oh, I'm a country girl. I um, I did a bit of u- semester of university in North Carolina in America, and so I really got into my country music. 
And I think I enjoy country because it's just got like feel good lyrics and yeah, it's a lot of my truck and my dog and my front porch, but I really enjoy country, basically. How do you like the electric trials bike compared to the gas one? Oh, how do I like the electric trials bike, which is the EPIA from Electric Motion versus the combustion trials bike, which is my Beta Evo? I have to say I'm completely sold on electric for trials. I think for the application of electric bikes, the the electric can meet all of the needs of trials riding. For someone like Tony Bow, it's not quite there. But for 90% of the skill of trials riders, the electric torque is instant. It's right there. You can pop. They have full clutches. And I actually don't miss the sound. You can, you know, not cause upset to your neighbours if you play in your garden. I would, I actually think my next trials bike will be an electric trials bike. Um, uh, uh, what do you think to the new Harley Pan America? Oh, the new Harley Pan America. I am quite excited to see how it rides. I am not going to give any judgment on it until I've ridden it because I can't have an opinion until I've tried it. I do think it looks pretty badass. I um, they definitely seem to have improved it from the initial concepts it will come down to when I get to swing my leg over it and I will make sure I tell you all if and when I get that opportunity if it performs like they say it does I think Harley should do quite well with it the one of the texts on it that I'm quite excited about is the fact that it has that suspension the ups and downs. So when you come to a stop, the suspension lowers slightly to give you, you know, access to the ground of your feet. And then as you pull away, it rises to give you the ground clearance. And that seems pretty clever. Um, so yeah, we will we will see. Watch this space. I will be bringing you my thoughts on the Pan America sometime in the future. Mm. Uh, T7 and all the bikes you've ridden. How high does it rank? Okay, how high does the T7 rank in all the bikes that I've ridden? I really enjoyed the T7, so that's the Tenere 700. I it's very much a bare bones adventure bike. It hasn't got all of the technology and the the, the thrills of it. I think for off road and more technical riding, it's a very very good offering. It does feel a little bit tall at times, but it gives you confidence. I think the drawback on the T7 is the fact that it is only, I say only, it is a 700, which means when you compare it to some of the bigger adventure bikes, once you're on the road, you do hit the stops quite a bit when you're you're pushing it. Uh, but I do think it's a nice bike. Yeah. So track day calendars have been released. Anything tempting you? track day calendars so i've booked in for the first british extreme round the extreme ravines so i think that's going to be the first race if you're talking track as in like knee down kind of track i have never actually done a track day um i hope this year i will manage to get one in i did have one booked in last year to pop the track cherry as they say but unfortunately it got cancelled because of covid um so we'll see what what the summer brings have you ever ridden the full taco brinko half electric half pedal bike have i ever ridden the what the full taco brinko full taco brinko well the fact that i've never even heard the name is a no i'm sorry half half electric half pedal bike yeah that sounds pretty cool. No, I haven't ridden that bike, um, but I like the name. I'm going to have to Google that afterwards. Uh, have you ridden the Harley Livewire? No, I have not ridden the Harley Livewire. No, sadly. I do enjoy the electric bikes. The torque on them is just silly, like silly. You have to hold on. Um, but I've not ridden the live wire, so I cannot give any opinions there. 
Sorry, that's a really boring answer to a question. <laughs> Keep the questions coming, everyone. Would you try drag racing? Would I try drag racing? Oh, wow. I've never even considered it. Um, is that Santa Pod Raceway? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, w- I would consider it, but. Ride what wow. You've brung. Ride what you've brung. Okay. Can Thug go on a. <laughs> Maybe borrow an electric bike because that would be pretty fast off the line. I think the Energic is uh, 0-60 in 2.6 seconds. Oh. So does riding take up your whole time? Is it a career for now? Where do you see yourself in five years? Where do I see myself in five years? That's a very good question. So honestly, I don't know. I just hope that I'm still smiling, I'm still happy, my body is still going, I'm kind of on a ticking time bomb for needing a a full hip replacement, I'm hoping I'll make this one last maybe five to eight years, so hopefully I won't be having more surgery by that point, and I'm hoping I'm still enjoying two two wheels on bikes and riding, and if I'm not, then I'll find something else that I enjoy doing, but I'm Hope that I'm just happy and content and enjoying life. Hopefully still sharing stuff with you guys. I really appreciate all of the energy you you give me following and getting involved with my silly shenanigans, which reminds me of the first question that got asked when I joined the live. So I think it was from Christopher about, did I take the trials bike through my parent-in-law's rock garden? So the backstory on this, in my stories on Instagram, people have seen me helping to build a rock garden for my parent-in-laws. And it's kind of a rock garden that actually looks like a trials course. And so I really was tempted to try and ride the trials bike through it. No, I didn't. I decided to stay in the family and not get kicked out. (laughs) So I didn't. I was good. Asked, what's your daily physio routine to keep your mobility on track? Daily physio routine. So I have a complex gun machine, which I use probably three times a day. And that's the most important part, I think, for my, my hip now, um, at keeping it supple and moving. I, I then just try and keep it moving, not sit for too long, not walk for too long. And there's a few physio exercises that I keep on top of. Um, and try and sort of make sure I do them every day to keep on top of it. Do you still speak to Meg's Brap? And would you like to visit her in future for some of those Canadian wood rides? Gary? Well, okay. So do I speak to Meg's Brap still? And would I like to visit her for some Canadian wood rides? I haven't actually spoken to her for a while. She's been all over the place doing her courses and training. I would jump on the opportunity to ride with Meg's Brap. If anyone is not familiar with Meg's Brap, she is someone worth looking up on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. She's on all of them. And she is basically a completely badass girl out in Canada who does hard enduro and is always out in the woods playing on rocks and trees and stuff. I jump on the opportunity to ride with her. We had actually talked about her coming over to England and doing a little tour with me around the UK, but we'll see whether we can make that one happen uh, when COVID allows. Nana21 wants to know, your hair always looks lovely. What hair products do you use? Oh, thank you, Banana21. Apparently, my hair always looks lovely. What hair products do I use? Um, um, What's it called? It's in a yellowy bottle. Uh, I think it might be John Frieda the Blondes. Oh, I'm not so good with the product side of things. Um, I do use coconut oil quite a lot. I just soak it overnight and leave coconut oil on. Um, I haven't got a massive secret tip for you. I'm really sorry. Mm. (laughs) But thank you. What's your thought on earplugs from uh, Robert? Earplugs, yes. So I have um, Custom Fit Guard earplugs that are custom molded. They've got a filter through them and they are something that I definitely recommend. So as we get older, our hearing massively 
can be deteriorated and motorcycles give you a lot of wind fatigue especially on road bikes or on the harley where it's got a loud exhaust so i'll always wear my earplugs when i'm doing road riding to keep that fatigue down and protect my hearing for the future so that i can hear my husband when i'm old and not be really annoying and deaf um, I do actually have a discount code for some earplugs if you head over to my website. So if anyone's after some, there's all kinds of discounts available on there that I've managed to negotiate for you all, including Cardo Intercoms, Bike Wash, etc. So worth having a look. But yes, I wear earplugs. Do you have any dream ride in the US from Terrell? Dream ride in the US. Can I answer like every state, but just like this really long tour that goes to every single one, but then I get to ride loads of different bikes on the way? That would be like the dream. Is that too big a dream? No, dream high. And then, yeah, we're going to go with that. I, there's lots of places I like to ride in the US. Yeah. I've done any riding with Itchy Boots, Norley. No, Itchy Boots. She is incredible. I think she's out in South Africa now. She's just left. I think she was in Iceland and now she's in South Africa. She gets on some really incredible adventures. She's someone I'd love to try and meet up with sometime. If you don't follow Itchy Boots, she's worth checking out as well. Um, incredible adventurer. But no, I haven't haven't yet met her. Maybe one day go for a ride. That would be really cool. When are you and Alex competing again for the title of best game time on Pro Pilot? Oh, okay. So when uh, me and my husband Rocky Monster are going to next compete against each other on the Pro Pilot. So the Pro Pilot is like this handlebar push-up thing. And one of the challenges you do on it is a plank. Um, and yeah, we did a challenge. Do you remember who won? I think you beat me by like 10 seconds or something, didn't you? Hmm. Okay. Game on. We're going to have to... Well, I've got, can, I, can, I, can I train? <laughs> <laughs> you're given all the power to bring an old bike back to production which one will it be all the power to bring an old bike back to production which one will it be okay i'm gonna be really lame on this one and say that i have only been riding motorbikes for such a short period of time i don't have that much knowledge on old heritage bikes um what's rocky wants his answer on that I think it'd have to be like a great big 500cc Mako uh, two-stroke dirt bike. Oh, blimey. That sounds like it would rip your arms off. Okay, cool. Okay. Is that a good answer? Does everyone know that? What, 500 two-stroke? Yeah. Wowzer. Has anyone ridden that? That sounds like an absolute beast. Anyone got one I can ride? Yeah, has anyone got one I can ride? Is that wait? No, I'm just setting myself up to have my arms ripped off. <laughs> oh dear. Now it says the HP2, obviously. <laughs> uh, What's an HP2? Um, do your products or merch ship to Canada? Yes, there is global shipping. So if you like some over there, you can order some. Um, and I really appreciate any support there. And I'd love to see photos of anyone who has bought some. And see where my girl on a bike stuff makes it. Okay. Are there any more questions? I'm um if anyone has any more questions about the accident or the recovery or even you know dealing with vitiligo, my skin condition, I'm I'm comfortable with some of the more personal questions so feel free to ask i realize that you know recovery isn't all about just riding bikes and there's a there's a, a mental side as well to that recovery and i think just want to do that little plug on how important mental health is and knowing that you're never alone uh, particularly if you follow me my inbox is always there so if you're ever having a bad day you can always message me and i'll i'll do my best to say something that might help or at least be there, someone to listen. So have we got any more questions coming in? And Leia asks, are you still using collagen? Ah, yes. So active collagen, yes, I do still take that every day. This has been something that's been pretty game-changing for my recovery. I take uh, a U-Perform active collagen and a little sachet, and it's fantastic for 
basically like the cellular protein process in your body, which is skin and hair are the obvious ones most people know for, but it's also for like ligaments, the elasticity of cells. So ligaments, tendons, cartilage, uh, bone strength, all those kinds of things benefit from it. So if anyone wants any information, drop me a message. It's something that I've absolutely swear by in my recovery. And I would, if I could climb on the rooftop without falling off, then I would to shout to tell people about it because it's really, really helped me. Um, okay. Moto Pappy, after your accident, what were the day-to-day things you did to stay motivated it might be good story for someone still bound by COVID-19 that's a good point um Rubik's Cube yes I did I learned to do the Rubik's Cube I'd forgotten that so it was trying to find things that could keep me entertained when I was in a, a less mobile state I I have to admit I did watch quite a bit of Netflix. I did read some books. A lot of the time in the, you know, the really darker moments, I just listened to music and I just lay there and I listened to music and tried to escape and having some gentle music on sort of just helped me pass the time as such. But yeah, I did learn to do the Rubik's Cube. I don't think I could do that now. Um that's some a challenge for myself. Um and then playing cards or board games things like that if I had people around um I think I did some sewing I made some tablecloths at one point and some napkins um sitting in the garden watching the birds reading just trying to find little things to keep myself entertained and my spirits up basically um what did yeah. you do mentally to get past the accident? What did I do mentally to get past the accident? I'm not sure I'll ever be fully past the accident. If it, it, I think it's about realising that I can't live in the past. I have to move forwards. The The accident has redefined me in a lot of ways, particularly physically, but I'm I'm determined not to let it control me I need to take the change that it's forced on me and um, I've tried to grow with that change so some something that people often ask is whether I have gone back to the sports that I used to do prior to the accident and the answer is no I haven't but it's not a no because I'm not going to I plan to go back kite surfing and go snowboarding and, and mountain biking but there's a big element of expectation management in recovery and for me, I know that when I do go back kite surfing, I will compare myself to how I was prior to the accident when my body was quite different. And I know that there'll be expectation management that I've got to balance in relation to that. So for the moment, I'm actually only what 11 months post my most recent surgery. I'm hoping by the warmer weather this summer, I'll be in a position where I feel comfortable going kite surfing again and I'll be strong enough to be okay with the fact that I'm not a kite surfer like I used to be. For me, the motorbikes, because they're a new thing that's been post-accident, they've enabled me to not have a comparison to how I used to be. It's just the the new Vanessa riding bikes. And I mean, there are certainly lots of moments where my body maybe gives up on me particularly when I put my right leg down and my right hip will just go nah sorry love and I'll just fall over because my right hip in that angle just has nothing and I go over but that's okay I'm not gonna give up on it I'll I'll keep pushing on oh yeah you see Fernando's comments Fernando's comments okay you're a, a woman with lots of courage determination and and vicious spirits who did or what gave you this inspiration role model that's a really nice question Fernando I I have to say my mum was a really big factor in showing me strong women and a strong personality a buoyant bubbly one when I was a child my mum was actually really ill for 
quite a few years. Um, my my daddy had to be my mum and my dad while my mum was in hospital quite a lot. And my mum never gave up. She she always pushed on. She found reasons to keep fighting and pushing on. Whether you know the strength of us as kids helped her, but she showed me that you don't give up and you keep pushing on. But then I think there's also the element of having seen my mum so bed bound for so long, it gave me an extra reason to make sure that I get up and make the most of the days and I'm able to, so I should make the most of it because you never know what's going to happen. So my mum has always been one of those people that will just roll her sleeves up and get in with everything give everything a go, try everything out. And my dad was always, you know, telling me I could do everything and believe in me. And I think both of them behind me made me feel like whenever I put my mind to it, I could achieve it. I don't know if my mum and dad are watching right now. If they are, I hope you're not crying because I can imagine my mum and dad crying for me saying that. Um, But I feel very lucky for the mummy and daddy that I've had growing up. They've always believed in me. Now I'm going to cry. Okay, next question. <laughs> says your YouTube videos are so professional. How do you achieve them? So my YouTube videos being professional, thank you. That's awesome to hear. I have help there, so I don't actually do all the editing myself. Unfortunately, I'm not that skilled. So that's somewhere where I, I have someone that helps me. Uh, but I do all of the video footage uh, with Rocky Monster Helps. He flies a drone and uh, between the team of us, me and Rocky Monster, we, we get all the footage together. But thank you. I love that they are professional. That's super cool. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, I had a motorcycle accident last year and damaged my knee badly. I still haven't got full range of motion. Would you have any advice on strengthening techniques and muscle building? You're an inspiration. Okay, Banana21, thank you. That's very kind of you. I would recommend looking into complex machines. Um, Drop me a message on Instagram or Facebook, and I can give you a little bit more information there. They are really good at building strength without needing you to use your joint. So you can build some of the strength back while your hip is still in repair. Uh, Knee, sorry, talking about my hip. Your knee is still in repair. Um, The active collagen is something that could really help you with that healing process. But um, I don't really have any specific exercises to recommend you because I'm not a medical profession. I haven't had knee injuries, but there's some tools that have really helped me as well. Drop me a message and I can send you some information on them. But Compex and Active Collagen uh, there are actually discount codes on my website as well if you wanted to save some money. Rusty says, which celebrity would you like to ride with? Which celebrity would I like to ride with? Um, oh, that's a pretty cool question. Um, I think it'd be fun to do something with someone like Charlie Borman and go on some like crazy mad adventure. Um, and then... Oh, who else? It would be... Mm, I don't know. I'm going to go with Charlie Borman. That's my answer. Suggestions below. So, yeah, suggestions below. Who should I want to ride with? <laughs> Actually, Maria Costella, the, the first woman to win the TT. I was really honoured to meet her on a Triumph event last year. And it would be pretty incredible to ride with her because she is certainly an inspirational woman in the, the motorcycle industry. Um, do you still have the bicycle that you're riding years ago? So thanks, JC. No, the bicycle that I rode riding at the accident, unfortunately, didn't make it. But I have replaced that bike and I do cycle again now. I've um, managed to get up to the point where I can do about eight or nine miles at a time. So I'm feeling pretty good there. But it's it's slow going, building strength back up. Good question from John. Do you have any metal plates or screws from your surgery? Can you feel them on cold days? Oh, do I have any metal plates or screws and can I feel them? Yeah, I do in my shoulder. Um, no, I've never been able to feel it. Well, what if it's cold? No, it's a bit. It's inside. Um, no, but it's a pretty dull answer. So we are. <laughs> I do, but I don't feel them. 
Um, although randomly, if I fall, I can almost feel them like in a not so pleasant way. I don't know if that counts. Um, so we are coming close to the hour. So we're going to do a couple of more questions. I, I really love the fact that so many of you are on and asking all of these very questions. There's some questions that have come up that I, I definitely wasn't expecting. Hopefully my answers haven't been too like, ah! um, but I'm really enjoying it. So a couple more questions and then we will let you get on with your, your evenings. Um, right. Have we got any more questions? What are the tools you always take out riding with you? I can't say the husband. <laughs> Aaliyah, what, what, wait, what are the tools I always take out riding with me and I can't ask my, can't say my husband? Okay. Um, I do actually have a what's in my tool roll video on my, on my YouTube, which shows you. And it's got the, thick, the classic things like uh, pliers, wire, cable ties, spare chain links, spare fuel filters, um, some tape, some resins sort of things that most of the time you can get yourself back to at least somewhere where you can get a trailer to you um, with a repair. Um, okay, other than the American Iceland trips, is there any other country Alex would like to visit? Ride through, right, Rocky Monster, this is a question for you. Where would you like to ride? Uh, Do you I... want to see his face? He's going to hate me for this. <laughs> Here's Rocky Monster. <laughs> Evening, everyone. Sorry, I haven't shaved. Uh, I'm too embarrassed. So Lockdown. Uh, I would really, really like to ride somewhere with uh, deep sand, like uh, some of the deserts in, in Australia or Morocco. I just think it'd be really uh, amazing fun because uh, I love the sensation you get when you ride a motorcycle fast across deep sand and it almost feels like you mm. are. Um, in powder snow yeah it reminds me of snowboarding yeah that kind of light front end and you just kind of glide yeah i feel like it's the exact same type of of technique you'd use off piste snowboarding uh, cool well let's make that happen i like this let's go do some deep sand riding all right i'm gonna get back in my box <laughs> I think Saudi Arabia would be good for that because that's where they do the Dakar. So it's got to be good for, for sand riding. Okay, everybody, we're going to wrap it up there. It's been an hour of um, really, really cool questions. Thank you so much. I want to thank every single one of you for every bit of support, every like, every comment you've ever given me as well. I can't believe it's been seven years since the accident already. And I feel very lucky and honoured to be able to share my story with everyone. My biggest goal is to help inspire other people to get up and make the most of every day. And if my story can help just one person each time I share it, then it makes what I've gone through just feel so much more worthwhile. If there are any burning questions that you haven't asked here, my inbox is always open on my socials. So please do you know, head on over and don't be a stranger. Hopefully ride with you all someday. Cool. Thanks everyone. Bye. Hey, well